All right, welcome to a flight from Toronto International Airport to Buffalo, New York. And uh, today we're going to be flying with very low visibility. If you look outside, you'll see quite heavy fog. So we're going to uh, test, test the MD-82. We're going to use checklists from startup to shutdown. But we're also going to be communicating with real voice communication to air traffic controller. Plus, we'll also sh use assisted co-pilot communication to air traffic controller. And the air traffic controller in this case will be uh, keeping pretty much in touch with directly with our flight plan, unlike the air traffic controller that comes with flight or with X-Plane 11. So uh, first of all, we need to get uh, this plane started. And the MD-82 has a very complex startup procedure uh, probably more complex than some of the other planes that come with X-Plane 11. But there's a little checklist that uh, will help you um, in terms of following the proper procedures. Parking and, brake. And so this checklist uh, comes, uh, it's a free utility plug-in, and you can load the proper checklist for the X-Plane MD-82. Now the parking brake on the MD-82 is a little different than uh, some of the other planes. You'll see it's over here and uh, you need to push that or have a keyboard shortcut which comes standard in X-Plane 11 which is the B command on your keyboard. On. So Battery as you, master. As you go through the checklist then you're able to check things off one at a time and it helps in terms of being able to start things up. So the battery master for th this plane is right here. And on the engine, engine start pump. pump over here. On APU master start then run. So you can see that a co-pilot is calling out the commands or a simulated co-pilot uh, so that it calls out the commands so that they're audible, which helps you to follow a, a startup procedure. Uh, so the <clears throat> it's calling for the APU master startup, which is right here. Now with the APU startup, it's not just a case of throwing the switch, but you have to hold it down until you'll see that the uh, dials move up until you get past the five or six, and then you can release the thing and then you'll see that we've got um, the APU started okay. check now you have to wait, wait for this APU power available illumination light comes on before continuing with the other procedures check APU left bus all right the left bus is over here on APU right bus right bus here on left generator all right, so then uh, now it's asking you to start the left generator, which is up here. On. Right generator. On. APU bleed air. The APU bleed air is right here. On. Pneumatic cross valves. Now these are located in a, you know, way down here, which are kind of hard to find initially. Open. Up. Auxiliary transfer pump. And if you thought that was hard to find, this one's even more difficult. It's over on the co-pilot side, and it's right here. On. Left fuel pumps. On. Fuel Check. Pumps. Center fuel pumps. On. Right fuel pumps. On. Check. Engine start system. The engine start system here. Now there's an A or a B. Now they're both the same, but if A isn't working, it has a redundant system B built into it. 
So select that to A. Select A or B. Now this next right engine. part here, uh, you're actually starting the engines. However, uh, because you don't actually have two hands when you're flying the simulator here, uh, I like to reverse these two procedures here and, and start the um, fuel control lever up first because otherwise by the time you're starting your engine here and switching down to the fuel control lever, you don't have time uh, because you don't have another hand. So we're looking at the fuel control levers here, which are here. And we'll just get a better angle here. Put that up. Put that up. All right, so now we're ready to start the engine. Start. Right fuel control lever. All right, just a second. So it's wanting us to start the right engine. So this is where you hold the switch down while the engine fires up. And you should start to see the dials move up here. And you'll hear the engine come to life. All right, so the right engine is started, and then you need to do the same for the left engine. Hold that switch down. And you'll see the... Uh, engine, the left engine come to life here. All right, so up you've on got, you've got your engine started. left engine. Start left fuel control lever up All right, on so we, we would engine reverse, start pump reverse the order of that in order to ensure that we had fuel for the engine. So the engine start pump, uh, which is um, over here, we turn that to off now. Off. AC bus X tie. Here we put that to auto. It's already on auto. Auto. APU bus left. All right. So now we can start shutting down the APU because uh, we've got engine power. So we'll turn the left off. Off. APU bus right. Off. Off. APU bleed air. Off. Off. APU master. Off. All right. So that uh, now we have our engines running, and we'll ready for pre-departure. Now we're doing a little thing, but a few things out of order. Before we actually start the uh, <coughs> engines, we would uh, file a flight plan. Uh, and I actually have a brother-in-law that is a real Air Canada pilot, and he says that they're usually in the cockpit about an hour before time uh, with all of the departure checklists, planning the flight management system, etc. So. You would file your flight plan uh, before you start your engines and before pushing back, etc. So, so uh, what I want to show you now is a, a neat little program called Pilot to ATC, which allows you to use real voice communication with air traffic controller. And it's a great way to learn the proper terminology for uh, communicating with air traffic controller. And it also has, comes with all kinds of features that you really uh, don't need any other navigational aids, really. Um, this is a pilot to air traffic controller, and it allows you to plan uh, routes. And initially, I was a little frustrated with the program because the um, arc cycle was different from what was uh, in, on my flight uh, X-Plane 11. So... I actually eventually bit the bullet 
and uh, subscribe to Navigraph which actually automatically syncs uh, the pilot to air traffic controller as well and uh, syncs to your flight management database so that the two are in sync so initially I was frustrated because uh, I would develop a nice plan using the pilot to air traffic controller using this program and then uh, my database was out of sync with it in uh, X-Plane 11 so now now the two are in sync so uh, the, the flight management system the routes will sync with the air traffic controller and it really makes an enjoyable flying experience so first thing you need to do with this program is to connect to your X-Plane <clears throat> Toronto Pearson INTL Information Delta 1900 Zulu weather Wind calm, visibility 1 Sky conditions 500 overcast, temperature 13 Alright, so uh, when you first connect to your flight simulator it'll actually figure out where you are and well you notice the map here now is uh, zoomed into where we are on the map and it'll also connect you to ATIS at the airport that you're at and you can build a complete flight plan here and there's a little utility here called uh, uh, auto plan which all you do is put in your uh, origin and your destination and it'll generate flight plan uh, for you also you can create the proper uh, the SIDs and STARS and load them so it creates a nice flight plan for you so you really don't need any any other all oh, there's a lot of other flight planning programs out there but this uh, will create a, a nice plan with you with the current uh, database uh, that's that's valid and uh, rather than showing everything there is to about the uh, pilot air traffic controller and programming I'm just going to load uh, a, a, a program flight from Toronto to Buffalo that we've already pre-programmed and you'll see that it draws it on the map for you and uh, shows you where your route is going to go and it also shows you the approach procedures for the airport that you're going to and it has loaded in the uh, SIDs etc for departure so it puts a puts together a, a complete flight plan for you and you can export that to X-Plane or there's all kinds of other um, uh, flight simulators that you can see here that it will uh, export to so it's a very very nice uh, utility and it puts your flight plan here so that while you're flying you can track all the waypoints that you're coming to it gives you at the top here things to your top of descent your estimated time to your top of descent etc and so um, I found that this program uh, will also show you any uh, traffic that's in the area uh, but without getting too far ahead of myself let's um, uh, load our flight plan now and uh, we'll uh, get ready for takeoff here so the first thing we want to do is to um, load that plan into our flight management system here and it's Toronto to Buffalo and it programs most things into it but you still will want to put in your um, maybe your flight number and your cruising altitude this is a short flight so we're just going to put in 7,000 feet and then we'll check the legs and as you can see here we've got uh, vectors here after takeoff that uh, the air traffic controller normally directs you to server but we're going to uh, program that right into our flight management system here so that it's in sync with what the air traffic controller tells us to do and we'll just check the rest of our legs and everything looks good all right so we've got a 
we've got a good plate plan loaded in the system here. So uh, the next thing uh, that we want to do is to uh, do the checklist for pre-taxi. So we'll go back to our checklist here and we'll go to seat belt taxi. sign. All right, so we need to set the seat belt sign to on and the uh, seat belt sign is here. And those flights these days, there is no smoking, so, uh, but anyhow, we put the sign on. And I would check that. On. Elevator trim. All right, so this is where you check the elevator trim for takeoff to see that if it's set correctly. And you can just roll this up and down here. It likes around the 10 degree takeoff. Now this set plane, for takeoff, 10 <laughs> degrees. This is uh, flaps. When you set these things correctly, the plane will just take off automatically by itself, and you really don't have to pull back at all. If <laughs> so, the, we want to set the flats for 15. And you can see here the flaps are coming down here. Lap set at 15. Set, 15 degrees. Right. Flight controls. Flight controls, this is where you just check your uh, trims, make sure they're working, the plane is responding to them okay. Your rudder, aerolons, etc. Now uh, the speed bugs. Checked. Uh, this speed this, bugs. This has little speed bugs here. <laughs> they're not bed bugs, they're they're speed bugs for setting the uh, proper takeoff speeds for the plane. And you can see that the V2 is uh, just around 140. Uh, and once you hit the speed of 150, actually, you should start retracting your flaps. So we've set. got our, our speed bugs V1. Set. Now, 125 KIAS. When you're taking VR. off, normally the co pilot. 130 KIAS. Speeds as you hit V2 them. but this gives you a visual uh, 139 KIAS flaps up 150 KIAS okay so the no next slash thing taxi do lights is put on the taxi lights all right which are actually right here so you put on the, the nose taxi lights On. Okay. Verify that your transponder. transponder is on standby. Standby. STBY. Pitot heat. All right. So the uh, pitot heat is. You want to set that for. And you notice here on the enunciator pilot or on the enunciator panel here, it's showing that it's not set, and so. This little panel here will show you things that uh, probably should be checked to verify that they're, they're correct. So you set that to on and then that warning goes off. Capped. Parking brake. Okay, so the parking brake. If you're ready for a taxi, you put that to off. Off. All right, so now on uh, our flight plan here, like I said, we're not doing things in the correct order. We actually haven't filed this flight plan yet. So that would be the first thing that you would do before you even do the startup procedures. And uh, as I mentioned, my brother-in-law, who's actually an Air Canada pilot, uh, he says about an hour before time, they actually were in the cockpit setting things up. Um, so we've got a plan here now but we haven't filed it we want to validate it first of all to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it and if it's a good plan it'll validate it with all the proper stars and SIDS and everything and tell you yep your plan is good the altitudes are achievable and then you could go ahead and file your plan uh, normally you do this before you even start the startup procedures but we're doing things a little out of sync today but just showing you some of the 
features of this pilot to air traffic controller uh, program here. So you notice that both things turned green now so that means the plan is filed. The uh, uh, It's a good plan, validated and so we're ready to file our plan with the uh, delivery now. So this is where you talk directly to um, uh, the delivery at Toronto International Airport and you'll see here that COM1 it tells you that it is set for the proper delivery request here. And here you would want to configure your call signs. So this is set for Ethiopian, but we're not flying Ethiopian Airlines today. So we've got an American airline. And you see that it's got an American 587 on here on the config. So we want to get IFR clearance now from delivery. American 587 ready to copy IFR clearance. 587 is cleared to Kilo Bravo Uniform Foxtrot. Climb via the KEPTA2 departure, with the WOZ transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 23. Maintain 7000 feet. Departure on 127.57 squawk 6356. 587 is cleared to Kilo Bravo Uniform Foxtrot. Climb via the KEPTA 2 departure, with the WOZ transition, then as filed. Maintain 7000 feet. Departure on 127.57 squawk 6356 Ethiopian 587. Ethiopian 587 read back correct. Altimeter 3074 contact ground on 119.1 when ready for pushback have a good afternoon. Altimeter 3074 ground on 119.1 Ethiopian 587. All right, so we have this uh, program set up for a combination of co-pilot co and pilot. So normally the co-pilot uh, read back, read backs, reads back the commands from air traffic controller. So in your config here, you can uh, set it up and how you want uh, the uh, air traffic controller. So here you have it responds to radio. Now you can turn that off and this uh, turning it off gives you good practice on reading back commands from air traffic controller and uh, but leaving it on really helps you in, in flying and, and just concentrating on the things that the pilot would normally request. Alright so we've got our flight piled, uh, filed now we're ready to uh, push back and uh, so we would uh, simply ask the um, ground control or the for pushback. American 587 ready for pushback. 587 pushback approved. Pushback approved Ethiopian 587. Okay, now we're ready for pushback. We've uh, started our engines previously. We filed our, our flight. We've cleared it with uh, delivery. We programmed our flight management system, and uh, now we need to request from air traffic controller for pushback. American 587, ready for pushback. American 587, pushback approved. Pushback approved American 587. All right, so we've got our pushback approved. So uh, we'll go ahead and push back here to the right. Now we're going to be flying in uh, low visibility today, so we're actually going to do a missed approach at Buffalo just to show you how the air, the air traffic control Here we go. works in conjunction with your flight plan so that if you screw up your flight plan the air traffic controller will help you and assist you in getting back on track again instead of leaving you wandering 
and trying to find your way back on your own. So uh, this program is uh, actually very good for uh, syncing your flight plan with your with the air traffic controller. It has a, a lot of other features as well on it, including taxiways. And so you can see that as we push back now, um, we're going to need to find our way to runway 23. So where is runway 23? Well, this, uh, if you push the runway button here, it'll bring up a map of the current runway Toronto. All right, see you next time. It also shows you the taxiways here, and you'll see that the, our departure runway is up here. So we're heading in the right direction. So now we just need to ask uh, air traffic controller for our taxi to runway 23. American 587 requests taxi to runway 23. American 587 taxi to runway 23 via taxiways Delta Papa. Delta, Alpha, Hotel, hold short runway 23. Taxi to runway 23 via taxiways Delta Papa, Delta, Alpha, Hotel, hold short runway 23 American 587. All right, so uh, that's given us the taxiway now to runway 23. Now, there, I just want to mention another uh, plug in here. Uh, this one plug-in uh, will actually uh, allow you to draw a taxiway on from where you are. It shows you where you are here and putting in those instructions from uh, air traffic controller it will uh, draw you a map on to 2-3. To uh, just by clicking on things it, it'll take you along the path and show you show you where you're going. However, <laughs> <laughs> this uh, program, uh, Pilot to Air Traffic Controller, does one better than that. It takes those instructions that you get from Air Traffic Controller, and all you need to do is push the taxi, and it draws the taxi taxiway for you on the map. So that all you have to do then is follow it along, because uh, trying to, if you're at an unfamiliar airport, you know that the taxiways can be very confusing. And even though you've written down the instructions correctly, you're at a very low level, t uh, at the, almost at ground level taxing. And to uh, figure out where you are, <laughs> I think that's one of the most challenging things for pilots if they don't have a, a good map like this. So, in this case, all you do is uh, we're just going to follow this map along and we'll check how our progress is as we're going along here. Okay, so all you do is follow that map along and uh, it takes you the correct taxi routes. And uh, as we get to the departure runway, the air traffic controller will get in touch with you and hand you off to the tower. And at the, you'll request from the tower for uh, departure clearance. So it's a pretty useful utility. It, it's a pretty well all inclusive, and you really don't need any other plugins. All right, so we're getting uh, close to the uh, departure for runway two three now. And we should be handed off to Tower uh, in a second here before crossing. You see there's coming up here, there's actually two entrances to the runway 23. And with stop lights on both of them. And we're going to be taking the one to the right. American 587 contact Tower on 118.35. Have a nice flight. Tower on 118.35 American 587. All right, before we contact the tower, let's just uh, review our checklist for takeoff here. All right, so before taking altimeter there, set, we check our altimeter that we have the correct setting uh, 
from the air traffic controller on what the correct barometric pressure is. Check. Engine start system, override. Alright, so the that is up here and you need to set this here to override. Check. Annunciator panel, checked. Alright, so check your annunciator panel here to make sure there aren't any warnings that you're not set for takeoff, that uh, your brakes are on, your pitot heat isn't set or something. Check. Transponder, XPDR. So a lot of people forget to set their transponder to Charlie mode uh, so that uh, radar can read your correct altitude when you're flying. Check. Wing slash landing lights on. Alright, so we'll turn our landing lights on. And we can turn our nose lights off. Check. Landing gear up. Alright, so the next is for our takeoff. So we're all set right here. We've got our flap set. We've got our proper uh, airline set for takeoff. Let's get clearance for takeoff. American 587 ready for departure runway 23. American 587 winds are 290 at 15 knots cleared for takeoff. Runway 23 squawk 6356. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 23 squawking 6356 American 587. All right, so it looks like when we set up the squawk here <laughs> that we misunderstood and set the wrong squawk code in. 6356, six, so we reverse those numbers, so we need to correct that. All right, let's, uh, let's go. All right, so we've got takeoff clearance on runway three so the next checklist will be after we take off As I mentioned uh, previously, this plane, when you have the correct takeoff <coughs> settings, it will basically lift into the air itself. Pilot would normally call out your, your settings here. Got V1, 2, and you can see the plane just lifts off itself automatically when it hits V2. So, landing gear is up. Check. Flaps retracted. So that beeping was just a reminder that your flaps check be set. Thrust set as required. All right, let's get her and set on autopilot here. Uh, we forgot to set some things here previously. Autopilot on. All right. Flight management. Put the throttle on. American 587 turn left heading 168, then intercept course to Sava then as filed. Heading 168 to Sava then as filed American 587. American 587 contact Toronto departure on 128.8, good day. Departure on 128.8 American 587. Departure American 587 climbing to 7,000 feet. 
American 587 good afternoon. All right, we were a little late in uh, setting our flight management system for tracking. So what it'll tell you here in the, this panel is that you're now set on nav so that uh, it's tracking you using the flight management system. Uh, because we are a little late setting it, we're a little bit off course currently. And you can track your course on the pilot to air traffic control system. If I just bring this over, you'll see that uh, we're now heading for the first point here. And it gives you a complete list of all your waypoints here, the, your estimated time to them, etc. So currently we're in the air, we're being tracked by the uh, air traffic control system. And so uh, the flight management system is taking control of the plane. So there's not much to happen currently. Uh, we'll just pick this up as we get closer to touchdown. We'll show you that we have a missed approach coming into Buffalo and then how we use air traffic controller using real voice commands to direct us back to the ILS approach. We're coming in at almost zero visibility so you really have to be uh, on the correct track in order to make a good landing. So while we're cruising along here and the flight management system is in control of the plane, taking us at our cruise altitude on our flight to Buffalo, let me just show you a few other things on the pilot to, uh, air traffic controller. American 587 contact Toronto Center on 134.25. Have a good afternoon. Center on 134.25. Take care American 587. All right, so this uh, automatically hands you off to the Center American 587 at 7,000 feet. American 587, good afternoon. Radar contact. Altimeter 3076. Altimeter 3076, American 587. American 587, contact Cleveland Center on 125.2. Enjoy your afternoon. Center on 125.2 American 587. All right, as you can see on our map here, we're actually crossing. Center American 587 at 7,000 feet. American 587, good afternoon. Radar contact. As you can see on the map here, we're actually crossing the border between Canada and the U.S., so we're being held off or handed off to a different controller the uh, Cleveland controller which is in control of this airspace and uh, a couple of things I want to show you about the uh, pilot to air traffic controller uh, you'll notice that it'll also uh, give you other traffic in the area here now these are artificial intelligence planes but occasionally the air traffic controller will give you a heads up that one of them is in your flight path wanting you to try and make visual contact and alerting you to potential uh, diversions that are needed. Now, um, what the other thing is that this green arrow here will show you your uh, top of descent. And I don't know if you've used the X-Plane 11 on the flight management system. The little dot that shows up on your flight management system is very very hard to see often and where it is in relation to your flight is also hard to estimate so this gives you a clear indication very nice American map. 587 contact Buffalo approach on 126.15 have a good afternoon approach on 126.15 American 587 all right so we're being handled handed off to approach now on Buffalo now there's a, also a approach number American 587 at 7,000 feet American 587, good afternoon. Radar contact. Okay, so this there's a number of different views that you can see on the uh, on the map here, and uh, we've got the sat uh, satellite view which we have currently, 
It also gives you a terrain view here and a street view here so that you can see the different roads if you're flying um, via VFR. And uh, it gives you the high and the low routes as well. So it's a pretty comprehensive system that really helps you in navigating with all of the information that you need. It also gives you the uh, charts here so for VFR flying as well. It shows you the airports and the um, areas that the air traffic controllers control. One of the other things that it has is the standard information departures. A standard uh, uh, you know, departure routes, the SIDS, and you select here the runway that you're departing from. If you're given a, a SID, you can just plug it in here. In this case, I think we were given the uh, kept a two, and then you select the transition here. In this case, it was to Wozy. And you can see it, it drew the proper route for you here and then you can just load that into your flight plan. So it's a pretty, pretty uh, nifty little system for planning your flights and the same for arrivals. If you're given something different from uh, air traffic controller for your arrival, uh, you can plan your uh, star in here. And in the case of Buffalo, there is no uh, star. It's a, it'll tell you that no stars are available for Buffalo. Uh, so you, then you select the approach. And so then you select the transition here that you're coming in from. And uh, we're going to have a Trava. That's the approach that we're coming in from. So then you can program in that into your flight management system. So it's very, very uh, useful little planning tool, very easy to plan, both your uh, SIDs and STARS and approaches. And uh, one of the other things that I like about it is you'll find, uh, as we have a missed approach later on, and the air traffic controller gives us a whole bunch of different instructions, it's hard to figure out what they've told you and where you are. And you push this little approach button here and it'll show you the exact approach currently that's programmed into your flight management system but also when you switch to being directed by the air traffic controller it'll also draw it out so American 587 expect the ILS approach to runway 23 with the Trava transition at Buffalo Niagara International cleared direct to Woz events direct Trava Expect the ILS approach to runway 23 with the Trava transition clear direct Wozi then direct Trava American 587. Alright, so that's just giving us information from the uh, Buffalo approach on where, what's going to happen and then saying that we're going to be uh, going direct from Wozi here to the Trava transition here. Now there's a couple of flight levels that uh, are happening over here and if you have it properly programmed into your uh, flight management system you can use the VNAV to do the correct speeds and uh, and automatically correcting the, the levels. In this case we're going to set the uh, flight levels manually and we may even fly this uh, approach here manually um, just to simulate a missed approach and then asking air traffic controller to help us out as we're floundering over the, uh, I guess that's uh, uh, Lake Erie, um, coming into Lake Ontario here. Niagara Falls, uh, I believe, is around here. Uh, so. Uh, Currently, we just passed Niagara Falls and we're heading for Buffalo. So uh, we're going to uh, just pause uh, right for right now and we're going to pick it up as we uh, actually get off of this transition here and are coming back to uh, Buffalo for the missed approach. 
Continue ILS to runway 23 will call when established on final American 587. American 587 slow to 250 knots or less. Wilco American 587. American 587 expedite speed reduction to 250 knots. Wilco American 587. Okay, so we're giving, uh, being given some uh, instructions from the controller then for the ILS approach. And uh, let me just show you a few things on the pilot to air traffic controller. So we've actually come across uh, now we're heading into this approach situation here. And we're actually going to have a deliberate missed approach on the runway and showing how the air traffic controller can help you to get back on track again and you can use real voice commands for communicating with the air traffic controller. Uh, let me just show you a couple things here now. We're given the ILS approach to Buffalo but how do you know what the uh, uh, proper frequencies are? You can click this info button over here and it'll show you the airport that you're heading to here is Buffalo and you look at the runways here and it tells you information about the runways currently this is runway 5 it shows you the frequency it also shows you the the uh, altitude of the runway uh, and uh, you can move along here to runway 14 runway 23 and that's the currently the runway we're we're heading to you can see our plane is already wandering aimlessly over here. It's it's lost track. It's it's actually coming around and probably going to try and line up on here. But we're going to actually have a deliberate missed approach to the runway. Uh, but uh, this this tells you different information, and it'll also even give you the correct uh, information, weather information for Buffalo here. So uh, it's a useful little little feature here. All right, so we're coming around here now to uh, to Buffalo, and we're uh, because this didn't fly this route correctly. You'll find that sometimes lining up for an ILS approach, when uh, you know, particularly with your low visibility and slowness at setting the correct altitudes, etc., if you don't have it on VNAV, you'll end up often having a missed approach. So let's uh, just show you what that missed approach looks like so currently we're we're coming in and uh, uh, we'll try and uh, lock into the um, ILS frequency and the nav one is set to the correct ILS frequency for runway 23 so we can click on the VOR uh, lock uh, when we're we're close to the correct uh, position for the runway. And I'll try to it. So that picked up the uh, the uh, correct uh, lock on the runway. And I push the button here to indicate that we want a <coughs> uh, to ILS approach, but our altitude is too high, and so we're going to miss miss the ILS uh, approach here. And one of the other things that you'll notice here is uh, when, when you're setting your uh, rate of Turn. American 587 winds are 302 at 9 or knots cleared to land runway 23. Clear to land runway 23 American 587. All right, so we're, we're cleared to land, but uh, we don't have enough flap up down for one thing. The, the plane is tilting violently. We're coming in too fast. And so now the plane has got lost. It's lost its track 
and it doesn't know where it is. <laughs> it's wandering aimlessly. So we've missed our approach to the runway. We're uh, too high. Uh, we didn't handle the controls correctly. So we're going to just go to a, a heading lock now instead of the uh, nav lock. And uh, we want uh, to get off of that. So we're going to go to the um, heading lock here. All right, so we had a missed uh, ILS approach there. <clears throat> we weren't paying attention. We turn, turned too soon on the final approach. Uh, looking over our vacation schedule, whatever, we, we just had a missed approach. So now we're wandering aimlessly over Lake Erie on a missed approach to Buffalo. Now there are standard procedures for a missed approach. So um, one of the things that are very helpful with this pilot to uh, ATC is it has uh, grammar help available for you. So we had, in this case, a missed approach. Uh, we can go to tower. We can request different help here uh, on the approach. Now the tower normally just gives you a clearance for, uh, for landing. So we likely have to contact approach to get proper vectors, but that's, uh, you can see that that has proper uh, grammar available there on what you should do for requesting help. So let's um, look at uh, requesting help for approach, the missed approach, and we'll request vectors. American 587 is missed approach request vectors for visual straight into runway 23. American 587 radar contact. Continue ILS to runway 23 call when established on final. Call when established on final for ILS to runway 23 American 587. All right, so that's uh, what I expected from the tower is that uh, it didn't give us the correct uh, instructions for uh, vectors for an ILS approach we're still wandering aimlessly over Lake Erie so what we need to do is to contact um, approach and so we need to find the proper frequency for that so if you click this button here on frequencies you'll see here that uh, it brings up your Buffalo approach here and that automatically tunes it into the uh, down here and then we put on approach and if we give those same instructions to approach now uh, they should get direct us to the ILS approach so let's uh, let's go ahead and see if we can do that American 587 is missed approach request vectors for ILS to runway 23. American 587 radar contact. Turn right heading 054 vectors to the ILS approach for runway 23 at Buffalo, Niagara International Climb and maintain 3000 feet. Heading 054 vectors to the ILS approach for runway 23 climb and maintain 3000 feet American 587. Okay, the air traffic controller has put us back on <clears throat> track again. We're coming in for a landing at uh, Buffalo International Airport now with the ILS approach to runway 23. We got we had a missed approach the first time, but now we are back on track again. And uh, we're just waiting for the pick up the glide slope, but so far everything looks good. Just putting the gear down. We're on the glide slope track now. We can reduce our speed. Put 
down some more flap. Fifteen degree flap now, our gears are fully extended. We can reduce our speed further. One thousand. All right, we're at a thousand feet. So you can see how the pilot to air traffic controller helps you both in terms of the right commands, the right controller to talk to, and getting the line back up again will help you have a missed approach. Five hundred. We're at 500 now. Normally, I like to switch off the auto throttle. 400. At 300. All right, so we're really coming in at zero visibility. 200. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20. I overcorrected there a little bit. Twenty. Ten. So that's just a brief demonstration of using the pilot to air traffic controller and some of the features of the MD-82.